LCS 2018 Spring Split. I am joined by Perks, who is victorious in his first match with a new squad all around him. What's it like playing with those new guys, Perks? Well, um, it's of course very weird and strange playing with a completely new team after playing with the same team for the last uh, two years. There is a, um, a lot of different, like, to, like the way we talk in game is different than before and everyone talks different and we are not still on the same page, like we are just starting to learn basics. We are pretty bad right now, so it's obviously really hard and stressful, but I think that we are learning really fast and we're going to get better really fast, so I'm really enjoying our process right now. Speaking of things going fast, it seemed that that game kind of really heated up closer to that 30 minute mark. All of a sudden, there was like this on switch and you guys were just like fighting all on the same page. Was that when things started to fall into place for you? Uh, I don't. I don't think there was some fighting after 30 minutes or something. I think we just played well around, like we played a good macro game, even though we could have obviously played better. And uh, we are um, just trying to play slow and like steady like due to used before, mm -hmm. until we get good, until we get really good, and then we can start speeding up the game. Because uh, personally, I could have played better this game. And I think our team fights like were misplayed, but our macro like saved uh, our team fighting, you know. So you have a lot of the elements of greatness, but you're still working on putting it all together. For the G2 squad that, of course, you guys are still holding as four-time champions, what do you say to everyone that says the throne is empty right now? <laughs> well, that's like a really funny meme, <laughs> because as long as I'm here, like, <laughs> the throne is still on, so. All right, well, everybody better watch out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Take it. Apparently, we've got a gift from Ocelot, and that's all the time we got back, so we're going to go ahead and send it back over to Shox at the desk. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pyro. Ocelot wanted to make an appearance and give him a present for a great performance. And with that great performance, Perks is also our very first Frink Split player of the game, which you guys voted for on Twitter, and I feel like that's a pretty solid choice. I agree with all the viewers, and I also drafted him first in my fantasy league here, so and uh, I'm already winning, so it's actually a great start. It is, and it's an even better start because we have someone new here on the desk. I'd like to introduce one of our newest additions to the broadcast, Marie's amazing Stuken Schneider. Very happy. Happy to have you. And you. Uh, well, let's dive straight into our pregame analysis for the next game as we're going to take a first look at Vitality and H2K. These are two teams that have a lot of new faces going into the new season. So many that out of the 10 <laughs> we saw on the Rift last year, there's only one returning, and that's Cabo Shard. But uh, he's not on H2K, and I do want to start by talking about H2K because they are a team that really overhauled their entire roster coming into 2018. We can see it there. Uh, Smitty J sent Torrin, Hadrill, Sheriff, and Promise Q is what they decided to come up with. So what are the expectations for this roster? They're putting their faith in the rookies. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure how far they can go, but I definitely think that the group of players that they accumulated now is really interesting because they do have a lot of talent. But what I'm looking for and what I'm really interested in is how Centaurin actually uh, is going to play in EU again because um, he's been blamed for so many losses like in terms of TSM, like he was the NA Ward, the original one. <laughs> and... Uh, like, I actually think that he's really, really talented. Uh, he's mechanically good, he's uh, a system player, but he's really good at um, integrating um, schemes off of coaches into the games and keeps his team as accountable. And um, the last time he met Gilius, he actually destroyed him in CS. So uh, I'm eager to see if he can actually transition that into you now. Well, I'm actually happy that there's someone taking a stand for Centaurin because usually sure. the reflex you have looking at this roster is, oh, Smitty J, oh, Centaurin. In the last year, it's not like they won any great trophies, right? So it's good to have kind of a different voice because they're going to have to lead these rookies. So are they then the key to the success of H2K, Cadrill and Sheriff? I mean, I think if you look at the fact that Kedril is now the mid laner on this team and Sheriff is the AD care, like they have to be really good if H2K wants to make playoff and if H2K really wants to make a big splash in the EU LCS. Especially Sheriff is one of the guys that we have to talk a lot about because he is a very mechanically gifted player, but he's very young. He's obviously very new to the professional scene and he needs the big veterans like Centaurin, like Promise Q, around him to guide him and teach him the basics of competitive League of Legends. And if they can do that, a guy like Sheriff can actually shine. It, si it sounds like to me that that's like a project which is going to take some time. It should take some time, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see what happens on the other side of the Rift. Also a team that's put a lot of faith into rookies, H2K's opponents, Vitality. Uh, Vitality, honestly, they've struggled to make it to the top of the EULCS over the past couple of years. And it's nice to see that they're starting with some fresh 
talent. So much even that the Fischio said in our preparation, this is the most exciting set of rookies since Misfits. So what makes you say that? <laughs> I mean, if you look at the fact that it is four former Giants members on this team now, so they already have built-in synergy between Gilius, Jizuke, Mitrupex, and Jack Troll. That's, first of all, very important when you have a bunch of new guys, a bunch of rookies who needs to get used to playing on the big LCS stage. The second thing is the confidence these guys have. Like Mini Trubex, the first Portuguese player in the LCS, ready to talk some smack, you know, ready to work super hard and show he actually is better than some of the other rookie AD carries coming in. That competition and that fire, I think really will benefit a Vitality lineup who's been used to just kind of reusing some old names. Yeah, but um, like this confidence they have had in the CS especially, it's something that I'm interested in if, if, if it can actually transition into the LCS because for me, confidence uh, usually comes with a lot of emotion and that emotion can go into the other direction too where uh, if the success is not coming in anymore, maybe they have a couple of rough patches or games where they don't play as well as, as they should how the personalities on the team will actually react to that kind of pressure coming in. Uh, because I know Gillis, I know Cover Shard, uh, <laughs> they really like to bump heads. So um, I just want to see if they can avoid tilting and play well on the LCS stage continuously. I also just want to see them coming to this first game here and just like show something really aggressive early on. because. I mean, Gilius has been tweeting, I think, 10 tweets yeah. just <laughs> today about how everyone is going to get destroyed. Yeah. And then we want to see his first game where he's on point mm -hmm. and he's not losing to H2K because if you can talk that much smack, you also got to deliver on stage. Got to put yeah. his money where his mouth is. We'll see. A lot of questions around Vitality and it'll also be interesting to see what H2K can do this game. Let's see what their coach veteran has to say. Hello everyone, I am here with Veteran, the coach of H2K. Obviously, before we start, I want to say good luck today. I hope you guys have a great performance on the stage. Thank you. You're back with H2K now, Veteran. You were with Schalke for a little while. What's made you choose to come back to H2K? Yeah, so H2K always had like an upper management staff that I really, really trusted and I really got along with and they kind of understood where I wanted to go with my vision for a team always and they've always been very supportive about that even back when I was an analyst on H2K and so that whole rapport is what I really came back to H2K for. I, I think they're one of the best in the business. It's very interesting to hear that because a lot of people look at the, the current H2K roster after seeing yeah. H2K challenge for playoffs for yeah. a while and say it's probably a step down from what we expect from them. What is it that actually made you pick this set of five players? Sure, so I knew that immediately I wanted to work with Smitty and Cajal again. I think that they are exceptional solo lanes and they're exceptional voices in the game. People definitely underrate, it's not exactly something that the public would know, how much uh, certain players attribute to communication or contribute to communication, I should say. Uh, and Smitty and Cajal have always been very decisive decisive players on stage games. Smitty is very uh, extensively knowledgeable about the map. He's very good at making those types of call and both of them are very decisive in team fights whether ahead or behind. We're not a team that's ever going to be like slowly losing the game from behind. I know that for a fact once I'd secured these two players. Sheriff, very talented rookie AD. Uh, previous AD I worked with was upset obviously so I was always scouting solo queue for these types of AD players and Sheriff definitely fits into the mold uh, that I believe a strong rookie AD player should have if he's going to go forward and do well. He needs uh, game knowledge added to it, obviously, uh, but he, I think he's surrounded with some very knowledgeable people in Smitty and Cajal. I want to ask you about the other two guys that you haven't mentioned yeah. yet, though. Santorin yeah. and Promise Q, who yeah. used to be Sprassel, of course. Yeah. They're two players that perhaps many people look at and say they're not at the sort of LCS level that we'd expect. Okay, so when it comes to both those players, uh, I interviewed a lot of players, a lot of whom are, have made it into the LCS on other teams for both of those positions. Uh, when it came to these two more supportive positions, the mechanical difference between players was actually not really, like, that huge so it more came down to in interviews I, I would challenge them on what I thought their flaws were and I would gauge how their reactions were to it. Uh, with Sprattle particularly I immediately asked him first question out of the bat uh, where do you think you have improved and do you think it was significant and I asked this to, to a lot of other supports who had been like you could say veterans of the scene as well. Sprattle gave the best answer for sure to, to this specific question and when it comes to actually breaking down where he thinks he's good and where he thinks he needs to develop, he could be very specific. There were not a lot of players who could be specific on the same way as him. I could see he was looking at the right things and looking for the right ways to improve. Some of the people that he cited that he learned from, for example, uh, Yellow Star had very high praise for, uh, and the things that he had been taught from them, things more to focus on, gave me like a lot more hope than for a lot of other supports that I'd been uh, talking to at the time. That's really good to hear, Veteran. Yeah. Good luck again today. Excited.
about everything veteran said there. It seems like he's a lot of confidence in this H2K roster. Oh, yes. A lot of people in the community have had questions, but there is definitely some promising talent there. We're soon going to get started with picks and bands. But on the blue side this game, we've got H2K, a roster that we just have to run through. You heard it from veteran himself, but let's take a chance to look at it. Of course, coming in on the top lane for these guys, it is Smitty J, Jungle, Santorin, mid lane Cadrill, 80 carry Sheriff, their support promise Q, not Sprottle anymore, and Coach Veteran. And they'll be going up against Vi Vitality, the confident rookies on the red side this game with top laner Cabo Shot, their jungler Gilius, mid laner Jizuki, the Italian Stallion, AD Carry, Mini Troopax, the Portuguese God, as I've been told, and support Jack Troll, along with a familiar face in coach Yamato Kan. And what excites me the most, I mean, you've got the first Italian player, you've got the first Portuguese player, and I love how many people are coming out to show support for their teams, for their family, for their friends. Jack Troll has got his family here. You got one gentleman in the crowd with a Jack Troll sign, with a Vitality sign, ready to go. A That's lot of the thing support. I love. I love it. Absolutely love it. You got to love it when these new guys hit to the stage, when they get so much support from the community. And when we, we cast some of these guys back in the, the Challenger Series back in 2016, and players like Jazuke, just the Italian fans love it. They love the way he plays. He's extremely confident. Mechanically, he's very strong. And he did a lot of great things, but now he makes his debut to the LCS. Yeah. Arguably, yeah. people always say you're playing with the big boys, but you start with a rookie in the form of Cadrill on the other side. Now, Cadrill, he played for Schalke last year as their mid laner. They were the team that were able to qualify behind Giants. These two have already met before. There's already a bit of bad blood, and now they're in slightly different environments. They're with slightly different teams, and now they get to show once again the skills that they've developed. Over and the I just, I just want to see, because challenger teams come in so many varieties when they come to the LCS. They are either the gods, they are the misfits, they are the G2s that rise up to the